The large pond on the southeastern side of our village was home to many species of birds and animals. Along with waterfowl and herons, there also lived a pair of cranes. They trawled from one end of the lake to the other, looking for a tasty food. We often spotted them with desperately flailing fish held in their beaks. The water level in the pond fell every night and a small mound of earth that emerged with their home from the night. This mound was a safe haven as nocturnal predators such as fox, wild cats, and mongoose could not reach them easily. The two cranes called at the break of dawn. This was the signal for people to rise and begin their day. I have never been able to see the pair of cranes at close corners. However, when we approached them, they would immediately move away with long legged strides. Their bright red beaks and their velvety glimmer on their necks looked enchanting. Sometimes we would run after them. They, when this mood seized us, they either moved to some place that was beyond our reach or took a short flight that left us far behind in their wake. Often they would perch on the mound of the earth inside the pond. At the end of the monsoon, we spotted a little crane along with the pair. He marched proudly between the long-legged ones, matching them step by step, step for step. I was utterly fascinated by the little crane. I would sh try very hard to get close to him, but the older pair kept me firmly at bay. One day, some of us boys from the village entered the pond to pluck some lotus flowers. It was the middle of the afternoon. Everything seemed silent and still in the lazy heat of the sun. The people who worked their fields from dawn would go home by the afternoon. We spotted the pair of cranes in the pond playing with the baby crane. All of us took it into our heads to chase the crane. We ran and ran among the stalks of millet in the field hell-bent upon catching him. The hot sun beat down on our heads so that they fairly clicked and cracked. The little crane somehow managed to emerge from the field of millet. <laughs> the little crane somehow managed to emerge from the field of millet. One of us aimed a stick at it and he... he fell down instantly. The moment he fell, we all froze in dismay. Ran to his side and tried to revive him. Someone tried to prop him up with someone else. St stroked his feathers. Another boy straightened his thin legs. One of us ran to the pond and brought some water and cut up palms and dribbled it on his beak. His parents combed the boundary of the millet field and searched desperately among the stalks, calling all the while. They took a short flight for an aerial survey and continued to call, but to no avail. Their voices grew dim as they kept up their anxiety search. search. We all stood in a huddle under the Jamu tree and 
berated our friend as we, and as we watched this sad display of love from the little crane's parents. Finally, they found their baby as soon as they saw him. They stood facing each other and spread their wings as if to protect the little one as gently stroking him with their beaks. They stood and wailed and mourned their little one for a long time, shielding him from shielding him with the canopy of their wing. Sometimes they would raise their beaks heavenwards and cry. They would flap their wings and raise their voices together. Sometimes they they cried separately. Their pain turned into tears dripping from our eyes. I have never forgotten this incident from my childhood. Perhaps the Crane family showed me how to, how we must love all living beings without wanting to possess them. Thank you.